Are we straight or not? Well, one of us is. One, <laughs> one of us is. One of us isn't. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon at Savage Trees. And look, Pip's back. Ah. And we're doing a crime time for the first time in quite a long time. Quite a while, yeah. It's since I've left our old. Well, no, because I left where we used to work. So it means that I used to sometimes kidnap Pip in the back of a bus <laughs> and make her do videos. <laughs> Sounds very strange, Sam. You might want Sounds to stop like right there. One of these. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the books we've been reading, some of the crime books we've been reading. Then we'll talk about what our next read along with us will be, which we promise will be in the next two months. So anyway, Pip, yes. tell everyone what you've been reading. Okay, so after I'd finished the dry many months ago, um, I read I See You by Claire McIntosh. Um, obviously, I've read I Let You Go and I've read Let Me Lie, but I've not read I See You. So I, I thought we were going to wait to read that together. It's awkward, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what? It's just because I really enjoyed the other two books so much. So I was just like really keen to Um And I really enjoyed I See You as well. Um, I See You is about um, Zoe who finds an advert in a classified section of the newspaper when she's travelling to work on the tube. Um, and she thinks that she recognises herself within the classified um, advert um, for basically kind of like a dating um Soulmates is one of those soulmate pages. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I keep doing this. <laughs> and yeah, it kind of just goes on from there about whether it was her, and then we find a lot out about what this classified page is, and it unravels a whole other story about this weird website, and we find out a lot about Zoe, and there's many suspects of who might be starting this website, which is one of the main things I liked about it, because throughout, it kind of was like every single person was a suspect. See, I like it when you can't yeah. work it out. And uh, you keep changing your mind over who you think you, you're like, yeah, it's definitely that person who's behind it all. And then I'd be like, oh no, because the new character would be introduced. She's very good at that, I think. Yeah. Does it make sense at the end who it yeah, is? Yeah, so I think out of the three... Don't give it away. Um, I'm not going to. Out of the three Claire Macintosh books I've read, I think this ending was probably the most far-fetched for me. I was a little bit dissatisfied by who it was. Oh. Mm, I kind of was a bit like... Okay. Overall, I did actually really enjoy I See You. Um, I think I'm just comparing it to the other two a lot, but yeah, I'd, I'd really recommend it actually. And then the other one you read? Yeah, the other one I read was Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. And I should say, my MacBook's broken, so you may see pictures of them here or you may not. It depends how good I managed to get with um, them. That's because I forgot to bring the books with me. And then I checked in the library just behind me and selfishly people have borrowed them. <gasps> how dare I know. What do they think a library's for? <laughs> when you sent, because Pip just sent a list of the books, and I was like, oh, it's the Elizabeth Haynes book. Oh, yeah. Because that's also called Behind Closed Doors, and it's also crime novel. But Elizabeth Haynes is now an author I really want Pip to read. She wrote one of the scariest crime novels I've ever read called oh. Human Remains. Mm -hmm. And it's about, they keep finding all these old people dead in their houses, but then they suddenly realise, actually, they might not have died of natural causes, and it's this killer who's preying on old people to go home on their own. Oh, no, and it I gets really creepy. I love old people though, it'll make me sad. Sorry. Um, Behind Closed Doors by B. A. Paris. This was so creepy. Um, so it's about a couple called Jack and Grace who from the start you think of this perfect couple, live the perfect life, and then as the story unravels you realise like, that is absolutely not the case, hence Behind Closed Doors. And we learn mainly about Grace. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's kind of nice to realise as you go along. Well, also, it's one of the things but... I think actually thrillers and crime novels are the hardest books to talk about because you don't want to give. I mean, obviously, with the dry, we'll then say to people, we'll pre warn, like we always do, Ooh, spoilers Spoiler. are coming. But it is really hard to try and sum up a crime novel without giving anything I away. I know because that is what the book is yeah. basically about, isn't so it? So you end up just being like, the book's about, like, it's like one of the things I've been talking about recently, you've seen because you don't watch my channel normally, apart from when you're on it. <laughs> but one of the things I've been talking about recently is I find it really hard to, I've done like reviews where people just read the blurb or, and then give nothing away, but actually with a crime novel it's really mm. difficult to do anything else. Anyway, sorry. It is. Good point, Simon. I do like a creepy crime novel, though. It, Tell me more. Yeah. So it's like super creepy to the point where I was reading it like, oh my God. But... I really wanted to read on, which I don't know what that says about me, but... <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot. It's really dark, it's really creepy. Slightly dissatisfied with the ending. What's wrong with I you know, the at the because, moment? Do you know what it is? I think I kind of like things to be resolved and I need to realise that that doesn't happen a lot. But I don't mind if things aren't resolved and you know there's going to be a sequel. It's a very kind of cliffhanger ending. You kind of just, you're left to make up your own mind about what happens, which is good as well, but I was 
kind of just wanting a little bit more, I think. Cause, mm. Mainly because I wanted to know who, what happened to the person that I really didn't like in the book. And she I wanted to know they got what was coming to them. She absolutely was it all. Anyway, oof, got a bit carried <laughs> away there, didn't I? <laughs> One that I'm actually going to give you a copy of. You can't see this, but we're filming on a big pile of books. Because <laughs> I forgot my tripod. <laughs> Um, and then there's a book Very called absent. Darling there, which I want you to read because okay. I need to talk. It's a book that I didn't 100% love, but I really need to talk to people about it. It's by Rachel Edwards, and it's the first sort of Brexit novel. Oh, okay. And it happens, it starts not long after the, well, it starts the day of the Brexit decision, or the day after the Brexit decision. And a man and woman fall in love. She's black, he's white, and they kind of become this um, combined, well, they become a couple, and then they move her son into his house with his daughter and from his daughter and from the beginning yeah that and from the beginning his daughter is like oh i didn't realize that my dad had a thing for black women and so there's all this racial tension but also from the beginning you know that by the end of it one of them will be dead because you read from oh no that was the other book yeah. <laughs> uh, but i i found the ending too twisty like it gets Twist after twist after twist oh, after yes. twist, which I sometimes like, don't like because it's like, oh, come on. It becomes on. too far fetched as well, doesn't it? Like? Yeah, so, but I want you to read it because I need to talk to somebody about uh, it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give, but I'm not going to give you that bad one. I've got a finished, nice finished copy and you can batter okay. on your own back. What are you reading now, Pip? I am currently reading The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, um, which was actually a birthday present from Simon to myself. <laughs> Sorry, I will talk about the book in a minute. It says to Pip, you smell. Um, what you'll also see ooh, 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 is uh, my lovely new bookmark that Simon got me for my birthday. BFF. BFF. With a tassel. Too you good to you. The woman in Cabin 10 follows a character called Low Blacklock um, who works for a local travel magazine. Um, it starts with um, a break-in in a flat, actually, which is kind of like straight away there's something happening. But the actual book is about her going on board this new Northern Lights cruise um, called Aurora. And it's about, um, she, she's on board on her journey and she witnesses... Is it a woman throwing herself off the boat? Yeah, I think that's in the blurb actually. I don't think yeah. I'm giving any spoilers there. She basically thinks she witnesses um, someone going overboard. And she's not quite sure. She didn't quite see it, but she heard it. She's seen a few things and then everything's going a bit strange. I'm only halfway through, so obviously I don't know what's happening. I wouldn't say that was half. Even but no, I'm, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. I've re I really enjoyed Ruth Ware's um, In a Dark, Dark Wood. See, I've gone the other way. So I've read In a Dark, Dark Wood and I've read The Lion Game, which is her third. I've missed the second and I've now got the fourth, which what I love is I think what she was saying at an event that I saw is she's kind of, the first one was obviously the Hen Light one and this one's about travelling. Mm -hmm. There's like a nod to previous sort of Agatha Christie because Agatha Christie is mm -hmm. like Death on the Nile or whatever. Yeah. And then the third one's all of, is this kind of an antidote to the first one because the first one's all about women who don't really like each other yeah. and then the new line goes about women who, what women will do for each other but the new one's like a proper murder like mystery in a haunted old house mm. I'm very excited uh, is that about the, that I've got that as well haven't I? no no yeah that's awkward you didn't buy me that one it's because it's not out yet oh it's not out until the end of June I'm glad you had two coffees. <gasps> before we talk about the dry, because we've talked about what we've read recently, lovely. Mm -hmm. um, before we talk about dry, the book that we're going to read together for the next episode, which we promise will be in the next two months, mm -hmm. is The Girl in the Green Dress by Kath Stancliffe. Now, we mentioned this on the channel a while back in a previous video. Mm, I'd gone through your shelves and yeah. the ones I picked up. And one of the reasons that you picked it, I think, was because the victim is transgender, so it's yeah. also about hate crime. and. Initially, I was like, oh, we could read this around Pride Month, but actually, it's not really the most Pride, <laughs> like, pro. Friendly. Yeah, but I do think it's an important conversation, so I thought it would be an interesting one to read. So we've not done a public vote, sorry, we just went with we what we wanted. We were going to, but yeah. No, we thought, no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you get it, also what's really good is, Kath Staincliffe is a Northern lass, um, and I think it's really nice okay. that we're supporting a Northern yeah. author. So there we go, so that's that one. And now on to the book that we read together. Yes, the Dry the by Jane Harper, which we read this because I've heard nothing but amazing, it's amazing, it. amazing things. Sorry, I'll be Amazing, amazing, amazing things about it. And so I was like, right, let's give it a whirl because I love Australia. Australia, I've never been, but I feel like it's my spiritual animal home, something, one of those. One of them. One of them. Home, probably, not animal. <laughs> Maybe my spiritual animal is a kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> or a koala bear. They pass chlamydia to everybody, don't they? 
it's about a, it starts off with a funeral where Luke Handler has seemingly killed, well actually no it doesn't, it starts off with flies swarming it's around dead bodies and it's giving you insight into weird. the murder scene. But then you go to a funeral where Luke Handler and his wife and son are all being buried and Aaron Falk has turned up and he, they were friends as school kids, they've not seen each other in a long time but he wants to pay his, well his What's not best wishes? What is respect. it? Sympathies, sympathies and respect. That's the right one. Not best wishes. <laughs> oh, Congratulations, you're dead. <laughs> well done. And you might have killed your entire family. Oh. Well, except actually, Charlotte, the youngest daughter, yeah. survives. But that's because, as the police believe, she's not old enough to to be able to remember or to recollect what what's happened. And then, as it goes on, there's also the mystery of why they lost touch with each other when they were younger, along with another girl called Gretchen. They were friends with a girl called Ellie, and Ellie died mysteriously, and Luke and Falk were sort of seen as being, sort of, well, potentially yeah, the killers. So this is where we're doing no spoilers, basically. Um, and so that's the premise, in essence. Now, I have to say, well, I'm gonna go with what you thought, because so far we've had an interesting strike where we didn't like the first one, jointly, we both love the second one, but I think we might have opposite feelings on this mm. one. So, throughout the whole of reading this, I just really struggled to get into it. And it was it really- kept saying to me, Simon, it's really dry. I know it's called <laughs> dry, but it's really dry. I didn't find it dry. Yeah. Ooh, I'm showing a bit of my I think, best. I feel like I'm the only person that thinks this as well. Like I've spoken to a few people who've read it other than Simon and everyone seems to have really enjoyed it. So I don't know I, what. I did enjoy it. I have issues yeah. with it like I gave it if you have to do the whole style thing I gave mm. it three stars but I would definitely read the next one mm. but I did have issues with it but I can't talk about the issues because until we get to the spoiler yeah. bit yeah no I think for me I didn't hate it it wasn't terrible I just found it really slow and funnily enough I think the Australia setting for me I didn't like it because obviously You're it's funny with settings because you don't like, like but you know the way it was like it's quite barren it's, yeah. it's really hot and but I didn't like that that obviously, made me I frustrated like that. that was just like oh you have a problem with Dark Pines at first because it was a bit too icy. Same with Dark Pines. I don't know. The setting for me makes like makes the book. I have to really connect. But I to thought it, that's I what it did work because everything, because it's so dry and because there's all these droughts, everything's really fraught and tense, and there's this kind of constant in the background, this heat, this heat, and everybody, mm. you know, they're not allowed to have a shower for more than ten minutes or stuff like that, mm. and there's all this heat and everything the whole way through it, and I really like that because. It, I think what the book is is quite brittle mm. in a lot of ways, and I felt that the whole way through. But actually, I raced through it because I started it about two days ago, and okay. I literally mm. raced through it. I couldn't stop reading it. Um, and But sometimes, weirdly, not because it's one, and this might be where I think the issue could be, you don't end every chapter wanting to read the next chapter. That's she doesn't exactly do cliffhangers felt, the whole yeah. way through. There'll be an occasional cliffhanger, mm. like every couple of chapters, but I think it's more about she wants you to work out what happened in the past but also what happened now and i think that she's using those as a driving force without the need for cliffhangers all the time mm -hmm. and i think that's where it's quite a refreshing read because i wasn't sat thinking uh, not not that sad i like cliffhangers so i don't mean to make mm -hmm. that sound snobby but i kind of was there's something about too many cliffhangers mm -hmm. and too many twists sometimes i have a bit yeah. of an issue with and this book i don't think i think it actually no, is quite understated yeah. in its it level is. of twist mm -hmm. although the big twist at the end really riled me but we'll talk about that in a little bit um but i thought i just i loved that whole i really love it when there's a dark secret from someone's past yeah and i no, kind I of that my slight issue was was how did aaron fork become a policeman when he had been potentially a murderer that i did yeah. that slight little and this is the beginning of a series i didn't know that until the other day but i will read the next one and um, but what did you like about it because um, you finished it. Yeah, no, I finished it. I mean, I think I've said in previous videos, I do always try my best to finish a book when I've started it. I do hate stopping regardless. I don't bother normally. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care if I don't... Like, with the first one, when yeah. we did Black Eyed Season, I was like, bleh, bored. Yeah, see, I finished them. Warning, spoilers. For the next few minutes, there will be spoilers. So you know that next time we'll be talking about this. But now we're going to spoil... This. Well, I hope not spoil it. Hopefully, enhance it if you've well, yeah. read it, watched it, read yeah. it, or listened to it. So, my big issue the Go killer. On. I did not, I was so cross. Yeah. Because, so you're going along, and the people in the frame are either Luke did actually kill his family and himself, yeah. or it's possibly um, the Ellie's family who years later want some kind of revenge, or it might have been that they're trying to sell the farm and all that. So, you're kind of pushed in this one direction. Yeah. And then it's the thing that annoys me most in crime when it happens. 
you're given a killer who has not been in the book, well, bar one scene yeah. at all. And I think that's really unfair on the reader because one of the joys of a crime novel is you're trying to work it out as you go along mm. and I think it should be a fair game and an yeah. open field. Well, that's a bit awkward thing to say in this open field because one of them's dead in an open field. I felt a little bit... I can't say it disheartened. I was frustrated. Well, it, I was just like, why suddenly has this teacher out of nowhere become the murderer? Yeah. I was like, I don't get it. And why? And also, like, he had gambling debts, but then why did that suddenly come? It all yeah. came out of a tiny little conversation, and that really, really annoyed me. Yeah, I just felt that as well. Like, I think, although you said about the gambling debts, I felt like that didn't warrant him to then suddenly go on this mass murder. Yeah. It and, didn't quite match well, up. Well, because also then there was this whole thing about this gang were trying to get him and so he had to kill But then also there's this weird moment, and this is the bit that I also didn't like, it gets very graphic when he is killing the family. Mm -hmm. And there's one point where he almost goes to kill the baby and he hears a mechanical laugh and looks around the house. Mm -hmm. She could have done a lot more with that and made like a proper like psychopath with voices in his head yeah, and stuff if yeah. we'd got to know the, the killer doctor. at the start. Like, not know who the killer was, but if, the kid, if there had been alternating chapters, mm -hmm from the killer's voice, I would have bought that because mm -hmm. then I'd be like, okay, there can be sort of clues given away. I just felt like if you were trying to work this one out, there was no way from the start you were gonna be able to do it and that no. really frustrated me. Maybe there was, did anyone manage to guess? But also some people would be sat there looking at us and going, oh, you don't have to be able to guess the killer. I don't think you have to be able to no. guess the killer, but I think you deserve, like I said, a fair shot. Oh, They've got no. to be one of the <laughs> I think you deserve fair game. Mm -hmm to be able to try and work it out. At least be in your line of thought when you think about I potential love, killers. I loved the atmosphere and I loved the setting, like, properly, but I know you didn't. Are you gonna read another one of hers? Yeah, no, it's not put me off reading anymore. The next one is in a forest. It's not going well, this is it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, I just, I like to connect to the setting, I think, and when it's something that I can't connect to or don't know about myself, yeah. I, I struggle to. She does do red herrings well, like at one point you think it might be Gretchen and then you think it might be, you might actually have been, but oh and that was the other bit that really really annoyed me, so there's one point where they think potentially Ellie may have been abused by her dad but they totally poo poo and everything, mm -hmm. and then this is the bit that threw me, the very very end, and this is where I was like I don't understand what's happened, because if at the end Aaron finds Ellie's diary mm -hmm. in a rucksack hidden away in the secret place that only they knew, and when he does, she leaves it, but she writes in past tense after she's dead. Mm, and I was like, I don't get it. I don't, like, has she actually run away? Because then they're saying that the body was found with loads of rocks in the pockets. So in that case, why was it a mystery that she died? Yeah. Why did people suspect somebody had murdered her when it looked so like a suicide? suicide well, then weirdly, yeah. someone then had murdered her. Because when you read it, you realise that she was killed by her family. That was the bit. I just felt it unravelled a little bit at the end. Like, you pulled one stitch and it all sort of fell apart. Yeah, that's good. It's a to come any hey. other thoughts? Oh. <laughs> hey, I right. oh, sorry, there's someone there. I do think when I start thinking about it more and more, I think maybe the setting is maybe what maybe didn't draw, connect me to it as much. I think that was the bit that, it's weird, I find that really weird, not in a thought that I'm saying you're weird. Oh, yeah. I am saying that you're weird. That, high, that kind of made it all the more high mm. for me. Um, but yeah, I just think, um, I, I do think it was slow. I do think it all seemed to happen quite quickly towards mm. the end. And I do think the first good half of the book was very slow. Whereas I think the first half was weirdly the better half. Because mm. it was that slow building of tension. I quite like a slow burner yeah. sometimes. Maybe I've just been reading books with too many twists and turns. And but that is what I think, but this is the other thing that I'm saying. People, that's what people expect from a crime yeah. novel. Maybe that's why this one did do so well, because it's not your stereotypical Well, yeah, I mean, novel. obviously it did so well, so. It did. It doesn't sound like My about opinion that at means all. nothing. No, it does. Everyone's opinion is valid here, as we'll see from the comments down below when people comment either way. But that's what we thought of the dry. What did you think of the dry? Have you read any of the books that we mentioned? And uh, will you be reading The Girl in the Green Dress with us in a couple of months? I've just had a thought on the next video when we review it, I'll wear a green dress. Have you got a green dress? No, but I'll buy one. On that note, we're going to go and have dinner with our friend Jane. But um, we will see you in the next video in a couple of months' time, we promise. So we'll definitely, definitely, definitely mm -hmm. do one in August, middle of August. By the yeah. middle of August, it'll be up. Mm -hmm. All right then. Bye.